Hello everybody, this is uh, Dr. Shailja Singh. I am serving as a professor in a special center for molecular medicine, Jawaharlal Nehru University. My group here uh, focuses towards the fundamental research in malaria parasite uh, biology, as well as we try to understand how the parasite is developing resistance against uh, most of the anti-malarial drugs. However, uh, in this particular research, which we are now going to talk about, we have uh, uh, worked in collaboration with uh, scientists from Orissa, Professor uh, Gunanidhi Dhangramaji, along with his students and team, uh, Sashi, uh, Sashi Bhushan Oja, Rajkumar Sa, who is a student from Jawaharlal Nehru University, and my other team member, Dr. Ivanka Madan and Dr. Ruby Bansal. They also helped us to understand the, uh, the some of the phytochemicals coming from the traditional medicinal plant, which are which were which was identified by this group uh, already situated in Orissa. So we in this particular research we have multiple uh, research points where we first uh, try to identify some of the components present in this parasitic plant, which is traditionally been used against malaria. The name of the plant is Cuscuta reflexa. So by uh, some of the biochemical uh, and biophysical method, we try to identify the components, the phytomolecules present in this plant, as well as we have isolated some of the components from this plant. And second uh, point of our research, we try to identify the anti-malarial efficacy of these plant compounds, uh, which can show uh, the anti-malarial effect. So we tested the effect of these plant components identified in Cuscuta reflexa, both in resistant malaria parasite as well as in sensitive malaria parasite. When I say the resistant and sensitive malaria parasite, meaning they are already developed the resistant against known anti-malarials like chloroquine and the artemisinin. So I am very pleased to inform that that these plant component uh, are very effective against both resistant uh, chloroquine resistant parasite as well as the artemisinin resistant parasite. We tested them in animal model also, where the animal malaria model we generated by using the plasmodium burghii, and then we could show by treating the animal with these plant components, um, they are surviving better. And that's what now the next thing comes in our mind that apart from its anti-malarial effect, it might also be uh, inducing the good immune response, which can help uh, against this malaria parasite. So the immunomodulatory effect and uh, the evaluation of the components uh, which are uh, working for the immunomodulatory effects are being done by Dr. Ivanka Madan, who is uh, a postdoctoral research fellow and CSIR pool uh, sci scientist in my lab here in Jawaharlal Nehru University. And she tried to uh, decipher how these components are working against resistant malaria parasite. Now, uh, giving uh, um, uh, Ivanka to explain further how these components show the anti-modulatory, anti immunomodulatory effect. Thank you, ma'am, for such a good introduction. It's always a pleasure to work under your immunomodulatory parasitology research team. So as ma'am just defined that what we are working on, it's just a, a extensive uh, elaboration on that part. As we all know, resistance to the currently available anti-malarial drugs urge additional drug lead identification efforts and further research into this deadly disease. So in line with this, we hereby propose that this natural plant extract, Cuscuta reflexa, may continually serve as an important source of new drugs and may be employed in the development of new chemotherapeutics. Now, this natural plant extract has already been reported to exhibit antibacterial, anti-helminithic and hepatoprotective activity. Here, we are showing the potent immunomodulatory activity against fetal malaria. So, usage of this extract has always been shown to be an envisioned strategy in malaria surveillance. So, here we have contributed to this effort by exploring the effect on inflammatory cytokine production in vitro and in vivo where the unstimulated and p falciparum antigen stimulated raw cells were taken and treated with the active column fractions and thereby examined for pro-inflammatory that is TNF alpha IL-12 and the anti-inflammatory that is IL-10 cytokine production and thereby we found that there was a significant increase in the expression level of pro-inflammatory cytokines which thereby shows this 
there is an improved survival in active column fractions treated with P. bhargai infected mice. And the previous findings of malaria protective association of early pro-inflammatory cytokine bursts thereby advocate the possible protective maintenance of TNF alpha and IL-12 in fractions treated infected mice, thereby enough to suppress the malaria infection. These findings thereby suggest that besides having the direct anti-plasmodial activity, the studied fractions might also affect the inflammatory cytokines production in infected mice, thereby modulating their survival time. So, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first study that confirms experimentally the potential of C-reflexa for malaria treatment. Further, phytochemical characterization of active column fractions through GCMS analysis has also revealed the presence of several compounds in these active fractions, which are shown to exhibit promising antimalarial activity in previous studies, thereby indicating its likeliness to be a drug candidate for malaria. Now, since both the fractions, like we had taken four fractions, out of which F3 and F4 fractions, have shown to harbor several antimalarial compounds in common and thereby reporting the antimalarial activity and immunopathological effects leading to significant reduction in parasitemia and improved survival of malaria infected mice. So the findings of this study confirm the antimalarial potential of C. reflexa both in vitro and in vivo. Therefore, the in silico analysis of all major phytocompounds against important and validated drug targets of P. falciparum in virtual screening may help us in identifying the potential drug-like candidates in these fractions. So therefore, I am pleased to announce that in near future, this may also lead to the use of active extract and monotherapy or in combination therapy with standard antimalarial drug. Thank you. I also would like to acknowledge the team efforts and uh, uh, the total project team by Professor Guna Nidhi Dhangramaji from University of Orissa, his student Sashi Bhushan Oja, and uh, other students who have contributed in this work. Thank you very much.